talking about sliding, which is very popular in South Africa. What sliding allows you to do is get bigger baits further out and you basically get bigger fish with bigger baits as anglers. We, we know that. Um, it's just one of those things. The bigger the bait, the bigger the bite. The faster you get the bite too. Since sliding started 15 years ago, there has been a drastic increase in the size of fish that anglers are catching. So basically, let's go through some key features that is required for sliding big baits. And these are things that we've picked up over the last couple of years. First of all, the rod, very, very important. You need a fast action rod with a reasonably soft tip. And this is because when sliding, you need to shake your bait down the non-return. If the tip of your rod is too stiff, as you're shaking, you will burn the line. And this is very important. If you burn your line, it creates a weak point in your line. And when the shark takes off or the skate takes off, you tighten up and your line parts near your rod tip. The line that I would suggest looking at is a high abrasion line. Obviously because of the shaking, you need something that is a high abrasion. Um, there's no other way to put it, it's simple as that. You get two kinds of lines in the market. You get a high abrasion line and you get a polished line or a gloss line. As I've got here, this is a high abrasion line. It's got a matte finish to it. This is a gloss finish line. It is a lot softer and burns a lot easier. If it's matte finish, it's generally high abrasion. If it's gloss finish, it's more of a casting, spinning kind of a line. Soft and supple. The second most important thing that I can uh, tell you is when sliding, always make sure that your rod tip is wet. So before you slide your bait down, take your rod tip, dip it in the water, and then shake. And the moisture on the line also prevents burning or you can use a product like silicon spray which actually lubricates as you're shaking it just protects the light it prevents any burning that might occur next is the size of sinker that you're going to throw make sure that your rod your reel um, can throw a sinker up to 10 ounce preferably something two mils 2.4 mils. Um, it's a much harder wire. When you're shaking a big bait, the sinker actually ends up moving if the bait is too big or if there's a lot of current. So make sure that your sinker is ideally suited to the size of bait that you want to get out there. It can't be too light, otherwise the bait will move in and you, you don't get the distance that you want. Next, I'd like to talk about the leader that you require minimum one mil and the reason being when you do hook those big fish you need to pull them over sandbanks over rocks also if you're catching raggies or grey nurse sharks they tend to wrap it around their tails um, when fishing for big fish you've got to go big the next thing is positioning yourself and that is critical if the current is running from north to south Always make sure that you are up current or up wind from where you're shaking. So if the current is coming down, make sure you position yourself on the top once you've thrown. So if you throw here, make sure you're standing over there. The wind and the current will actually pull the line around in a bow. And this just aids in the ability to shake your bait out a lot faster. Try and be as elevated as possible. Uh, in other words, try and find a high point and shake your bait. It also goes out a lot faster than if you're on a sandy beach trying to get a bait out over a shallow, a shallow um, sandbar or bank. There are two kinds of slides that you get. One is weighted and the other one is non-weighted. It does not work well in a strong wind or rough sea. For a rough sea, strong swell, 
you need a weighted um, lure, uh, a weighted slide. Okay guys, this is what I talk about when I say weighted. It has a sinker weight on the arm of the non-return. That there is a non-weighted non-return. There is no sinker weight on that actual arm over there. Step one is basically getting some nylon, attaching it to the ring, and this is for your sinker. Your leader will be attached to the swivel, and that will go to your rod. But when throwing, and this is the nice part about this trace, is that you take your sinker and attach it to your clip, like that, before you throw. The actual ring takes up all the actual strain. So when it hits the water, oops, that ring comes undone, like that. The nylon between this should not exceed 25 kilos. You actually want your sinker to break off when you've hooked a big fish. Put a lighter snooting over here, so if anything breaks off, it will be this part here. And of course, if you hook a shark, you don't want your sinker dangling behind and then getting stuck in the rocks, especially if you hook a skate, getting caught, and then your fish is swimming around the reef and you can't pull it loose because the nylon is too strong over here to break off. So make sure your nylon is a lot weaker here.